Hey, JC here. Today's a sad day. Um, the passing of Steve Jobs happened overnight and I found out about it this morning. And um, it's amazing that, uh, you know, every day we wake up and we sort of take for granted, you know, our health and, and what we have. And, you know, we look at what we don't have and, it's, and sort of complain and don't feel good about it. And, you know, it, there's a lot of wisdom when in passing and we can look back and say that you know a lot of things we could have done different I don't know if you've ever seen the commencement address that Steve did for Stanford University Stanford in 2005 invited him to come do the commencement address and I'll put the link down below so you can actually watch the whole thing but there was a lot of wisdom in what Steve said that day and I want to impart that wisdom on you because I think in the situation that we're all facing today we can use some of that wisdom and so I just want to mention a couple of the excerpts of, uh, of that commencement address Steve talked about you know the things that happened in his life up until 2005 and you know a lot of times we look at some of the things that are happening and, and see them as being bad and I've, I've tried to pass on a little wisdom that you know things aren't good or bad it's only what we you know the, the meaning we give them and whether they're good or bad and, and you can't foresee the future some of the things that you're looking at right now that you think are be as bad could really turn out to be a turning stone a turning point in your life that you know things could be so much better you know I commented on the movie Larry Crown and uh, that was sort of what I got out of that movie but the 2005 commencement address I think was really profound and I'm going to mention a few of the things that Steve talked about he talked about dropping out of college he said, of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college. But it was very, very clear looking backwards 10 years later. Again, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something. Your gut, destiny, life karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart, even when it leads you off the well-worn path, and that will make all the difference. Steve also talked about getting fired from Apple. A lot of people now can relate to losing their jobs. He says, I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have hap ever happened to me. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again. Less sure about everything. It freed me to enter one of the most creative periods in my life. During the next five years, I started a company named Next another company named Pixar and fell in love with an amazing woman who would become my wife. Pixar went on to create the world's first computer animated feature film Toy Story and is now the most successful animation studio in the world. I'm pretty sure none of this would have happened if I hadn't been fired from Apple. It was an awful tasting medicine but I guess the patient needed it. Sometimes life's going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking. Don't settle. Then he goes on to talk about death. And the, all he did was he told three stories. 
And as these were the three stories. And the last story was about death. My third story is about death. When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, If you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. It made an impression on me. And since then, for the past 33 years, I have looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I'm about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Remember that I'll be dead soon is the most important thing I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There's no reason not to follow your heart. No one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there. And yet death is a destination we all share. No one has ever escaped it. And that is as it should be because death is very likely the single best invention in life. It's life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. Right now, the new is you. But someday, not too long from now, you will gradually become old and be cleared away. Sorry to be so dramatic, but it's quite true. Your time is limited. So don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice, heart, and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. And in closing, Steve said, the whole Earth Catalog, most of us know about the whole Earth Catalog, we grew up with this. The whole Earth Catalog, and then when it had run its course, they put out a final issue. It was in the mid-70s, and I was the age of the people at the commencement address, graduating. On the back of the cover of their final issue was a photograph of an early morning country road. The kind you might find yourself hitchhiking on if you were so adventurous. And beneath were the words, stay hungry, stay foolish. It was their farewell message as they signed off. Stay hungry, stay foolish. And I've always wished that for myself. And now as you graduate to begin anew, I wish that for you. Stay hungry, stay foolish.